Hi everybody, welcome back to Happy Little Diodes, and finally, part 2 of the series on the Triton. I know you're all dying to see what's inside, so let's get straight to it. As you can see, this machine is still in its original case, with the original keyboard, which is really nice, the shift lock key actually mechanically sticks down when you press it. As well as the keyboard, there are 5 push buttons on the left hand side. These provide a reset function, a clear screen, a reset without clearing memory, and a tape manual override, as well as a pause. At the back of the machine we have a power socket, a rocker switch for switching power on and off, and a fuse. This device on the left hand side is actually a voltage regulator, one of three, the other two are on the PCB, and there are two DIN sockets there as well for hooking up your tape player. And the bit you've all been waiting for, let's have a look inside. Here is our single PCB hosting the entire computer, on the bottom left there is an expansion port, so that doesn't count, and the top left is our power coil. Let's go into a bit more detail. Here's the entire gubbins of the system. Highlighted here is the power circuitry, that's the coil, the capacitors, the rectifying diodes and the voltage regulators. The CPU and associated chips sit here, that's our 8080A CPU. These chips handle the input-output, that includes addressing the ROM and the RAM, and receiving from the keyboard. Here we have 24 static RAM chips making up 3 kilobytes of memory, and 4 ROM chips containing the monitor, which is like our operating system, and the basic. Most of the rest of the chips contribute to the video circuitry, with the exception of a few bits and bobs for tape I.O. As I mentioned earlier, we have an expansion breadboard here at the top. It looks like the previous owner started working on something, but we'll just remove that. And finally, down at the bottom is the expansion port, which enables us to plug in the motherboard that we learned about in the first of these videos, and expand our memory, RAM and ROM. What we're going to do today is make sure that our power circuitry is working correctly. That means first testing that this coil is hooked up correctly, and it's producing the correct AC voltages, 8.25 volts, 12 volts, and 12 volts again. We'll do that by disconnecting it from the PCB, and powering it up on its own. I haven't tested these three capacitors, but they're over 40 years old so I'm going to replace those. And once we're happy that the coil is working, then it's time to test the voltage regulators are kicking out the right DC voltage. We'll measure the AC output voltages of the coil using these six colourful wires. They're all routed together along the back of the case, to this connector on the right hand side you can see. It seems a funny way to hook up a power supply, but it does make it really easy to disconnect it from the board. The voltage regulator we saw earlier is connected here, and the other two regulators we can see here on the circuit board. There's two of them just underneath the capacitors. As you can see in the diagram, we're looking for plus 5 volts, plus 12 volts, minus 12 volts, and minus 5 volts. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. First of all, we need to make sure our AC voltages are correct. First I want to totally disconnect the PCB. So this power connector pops off really easily, and I might as well take off the keyboard connector so I can take the entire top half of the case away. Now let's make a quick check that our fuse is working, and according to the multimeter it isn't. As you can see it's a glass fuse, and it actually wasn't broken, it just needed screwing in a bit more. Alright, let's show this coil some volts and see what happens. Hopefully we don't see any smoke, and it looks okay. If I poke around with the oscilloscope we can see a nice AC waveform on each of these pins. If you're thinking of doing anything like this yourself, I'm going to post a link to a video in the description that will explain the dangers of using your oscilloscope on machines like this. I highly recommend you watch it, because it turns out it's a lot easier than you might think to blow up your oscilloscope. Alright, let's switch to the multimeter on AC mode and check the voltages of these three coils. We're looking for 8.25 volts, the multimeter says 8.2 so that's pretty good. Then we're looking for 12 volts, and the multimeter gives us 11.8, I'm happy with that. And then we need 12 volts again, and we're going to get 11.7, that's pretty good, I'm happy. But it does mean that it's time to put power into the PCB which makes me a little bit nervous, so I want to remove every chip. Luckily the chips are all socketed, so I can just carefully remove them all, and I, I do have a proper chip remover tool, 
but I don't get on very well with it. I'd rather just use a small screwdriver and be super careful. Of course, I also recommend using your static wrist strap, just in case, especially if you're handling these old, delicate chips. I'm especially nervous about the five ROM chips on this board, because the data on those chips might only exist on these chips. It's important that I get a dump of those ROMs and share them online. Now, before powering up, I definitely want to replace these capacitors. By the way, the reason to remove all the chips is because if the voltages are too high or just wrong, then you could damage a lot of those chips just by plugging it in. Alright, that's those capacitors removed. I did lift a track when I was doing this, but it didn't break, so everything's fine. Just be super careful if you're working on one, quite delicate. And in all our new capacitors. Okay, here we go. Let's power the PCB for the first time in 40 years. Okay, good so far, no smoke. So let's check the four voltages that we need. Remember that we want plus and minus 5 and 12 volts. I'm using the chassis as a ground and checking the 5 volt line first. That looks okay to me. And now the minus 12 volt line I found on the output of the regulator. That looks pretty good. Next up will be the minus 5 volts. Pretty good again, happy with that. So that just leaves plus 12 volts on the output of this regulator. And we're there. Alright, what a result, we have all of our voltages. In theory, we could now just plug in all the chips, plug it in and see what happens. But first of all, I need to check all of those memory chips, there's 24 of them. And if just one of them is broken, then it could be really hard to figure out which one. So best if I check them all first. I'll do that in part 3, as well as reading the contents of the 5 ROM chips. So keep an eye out for part 3 coming soon. Thanks for watching, and please like, subscribe and share.